Okay, so we got a. Uh, it's giving you guys a little reminder that uh, if you guys aren't to go, if you guys want to listen to this while studying or something. I don't know why you would want to listen to this while studying, but if you want to just listen to it, just audio version. There is an audio version on iTunes. Just search up something in podcast, and you'll see both part one, which is pretty much cyber talk, and then part two, which is more the big story. You know, yeah. So, if you are new to this, if you are new here, I want to say, welcome. This is the Summy and Podcast. Um, overall channel is on verse, but uh, Summy and Podcast. If you want to, just, if you want to listen to the, watch the audio version as well. Not the audio, but yeah, the watch the <laughs> video version as well. Well, you know, this is on YouTube, so you can also listen to the podcast there at Unversed productions but it has a z on it i think uh productions regular with an s was taken so hey improvise z but uh yeah this is some of number 30 i believe it's 30 i hope it's 30 if it's not 30 it's probably 29 but i'm pretty sure it's 30 so i mean well you'll see that in the title and says 30 well the right number <laughs> All right, we're gonna get into this because we got we're gonna be talking um, just a little preview of area where we're gonna be talking in, throughout the whole podcast. This one we got a uh, uh, cyber talk. We we're gonna be talking about Neymar being injured, what he's gonna miss, or you know if his series is injury. His injury is serious. Man, why am I not talking right? And then we're gonna be talking a players who are compared to Xavi or who could be. The next shabby. That's Cyber Talk. But if you want to skip over to Cyber Talk, I mean, if you're just doing audio vision, you can just go to part two. But here on the YouTube version, just forward it over to some. I'll probably be to, putting the times again back on the comment the description box below. You know, but if somebody can find it and put it in the comment section, that's cool too. Um, what am I talking about today? Uh, it's on top of my head can't remember but I'm pretty sure it has to do something with man what was it oh cars being turned to electric cars old gas cars being turned to electric cars over in Mexico <laughs> yeah it's not that interesting but it is what we got oh and some woman in a plane talking uh Talking some shit or something, you know, being disrespectful. But uh, yeah, that's more to come. So, all right, let's get into this. Neymar being injured. In the Coupe de France game, he got injured. Uh, well, he was seen limping. Who was it against? He was, I think it was against Stras Strasbourg, Strasbourg, something like that. Um, he was seen leaving the game limping. They didn't take it serious, I guess. But uh, I don't know if he went back to the next game, league game and... Uh, actually injured it there, there himself but uh it was a man I should probably let's see what we, what, 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 what we got so the world's most expensive player has suffered painful recurrence of the injury he sustained to his right foot last season after he limped out of this week's 2-0 win over Strasbourg in the Coupe de France turn that off what was that from oh that's something I had to okay Neymar would miss. Okay, so yeah, he got injured. His leg. And what's he going to be missing? Well, obviously, he's going to be missing first. That came out to notice was the Champions League. He's They were set to play February. Around February. I can't remember if it was February 2nd or February 12th. Let me check my calendar. Let me check my calendar real quick. Tuesdays, probably February 12th, most likely. It's on a Tuesday. So he's for sure going to miss that game. Let me see if they have it here. Yeah, February 12th. He will miss the match against Manchester United. That sucks. But uh, will that affect the team? I don't think so. I don't think it will affect them too much. They still have other players like Cavani, uh, Berratti, 
They still have King and Mbappe. So I think they should be good. You know, they still have other, other more players. Those are just a few to name, really few to name. But against Manchester United, I mean, I think this would even them out a little bit more. You know, not having Neymar, but I think this should even out the 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 teams. You know, Manchester United was already looking like they were going to have a hard time against PSG, but now that Neymar is out, maybe this gives Manchester United a little bit more of a chance. I want to say, hopefully, I'm rooting for Manchester. Yeah, I'm rooting for Manchester United. So, hopefully, this gives them the W, and it's all good, right? We're all happy. What else? I think it was just announced just like maybe today or maybe yesterday that he will actually miss the rest of the season. So turns out this injury is really serious. I mean, it is really serious. If it's like your, your leg, it's like what you need to play soccer with, right? <laughs> so he's going to miss the rest of his season and I need no name more, man. That sucks for uh, PSG because he's the most expensive player and he's injured so things break man sometimes things break sorry to hear that PSG but that's enough about Neymar we wish him a full recovery here in Universe Productions but uh, let's move on with some Xavi talk so Xavi is a legend in Barcelona and I I agree he is he's a legend in Barcelona and a legend a legendary midfielder for Spain. Now we're going to be talking some players. Who can we compare him? We'll compare them to him. And then being the new Xavi. Or the next Xavi, I want to say. We got eight players here. I've rated them. We've rated them. And we've... Uh, Oh, cool. Something delivered. We've rated them and we're going to be talking about some little things about them. You know, why the rating is how it is. So, first one, Davy Klassen. Uh, sorry if these uh, pronunciations are bad. I'm never good at pronouncing names. I can't even pronounce mine, my last name. So, like, it's all good, right? We'll just call him Davy. Davy? 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 Well, he's, he played at Ajax. He was really good at Ajax, and that's why they were looking at him. Everybody was looking at him, and they were saying, wow, this guy can be the next uh, Xavi. In fact, I think uh, um, one of the players, Kruit, Kruit? I, I can't remember his name, but he was from Netherlands, and he he died, like, I think two years ago, maybe. I don't know. what, what Maybe two years ago. I don't know. But uh, before he died, he was saying that this guy and two other players were really comparable to Xavi. And who took advantage of that? Everton did, and they brought him in to the English Premier League. And he flopped. He flopped. He didn't do so well. He did really well in Ajax. He showed what he can do, you know. With his passes, playing midfield, moving to the left real quick, moving to the right real quickly. But in English Premier League, he couldn't pull that off. He pretty much flopped. And then he went from Everton to Werder Bremen right now, where he is playing currently. And he's pretty much in the mid-table. Uh, Werder Bremen is pretty much in the table, the mid-table of the Bundesliga. So it's kind of still seen that he's not performing as well as he did as Ajax. And maybe it's the difference between how we talk about the difference of the leagues. You know, the Holland League or Netherlands is different than the English Premier League and the English Premier League is different from the German League and German League is different from the Netherlands League. Once again, it goes all around. All these are very different. Obviously, this guy was really well with Ajax but couldn't, you know... Do the same stuff in Everton or Werder Bremen. So we rate him out of 10, a 2 or a 3. You know, I probably go more close to a 2, so he's not even close. You know, well, right now, I think I'm pretty sure he's still young. He still has time to, you know, show. Well, I don't know how old he is actually. 2. 
<laughs> All right, next one. John Michael Seri. He, uh, so cool, funny thing about this was when Xavi was still playing, well, I don't know if he's still playing in Barcelona, but uh, pretty sure he was maybe. But they told him about this. He was hearing about this African Xavi who was playing in France, Nice. I think it was Nice. But he was doing this stuff like Xavi, you know, move, playing like Xavi, you know, controlling his the midfield midfield zone and stuff. And I think at one point Barca wanted to bring him in, but or it could be a lie, maybe I don't know. Barca wanted to bring in a lot of Xavi's Xavi lookalikes, but he ended up going to Fulham. Fulham took advantage and they brought him in to the English Premier League. Where, once again, he struggled, just like Davey, and couldn't pretty much provide what Fulham needed. So he struggled with Fulham, and, you know, it's a little late for him because he's 27 years old, and you're obviously not going to be able to see the same accomplishments that, he, that Xavi did, because, yeah, he won the World Cup at 30 years old, but, I mean, he's already had... Huge accomplishments, accomplishments with Barcelona, right? But uh, as we see right now, this guy, 27 years old, and he's struggling, struggling to follow him. Don't see much happening in the future. So, sorry to say, Sean Michael Seri, but we're going to have to give you a four. Now, keep in mind that this is out of eight players. This isn't making like 10 players, so it's not saying like, He's in fourth position. No, no, no. It's just a rating. Next will be Frankie Dijon, who is right now um, possible has 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 a possible chance of playing Barcelona. I think Barca is trying to get him the like Barca is saying he is the future of Barca. You know, he's the future of what they need. So he's pretty young, and I believe he's playing Ajax. Yeah, I believe he's playing in Ajax, and I'm pretty sure the coach from Ajax is telling like when they're talking about negotiating, he's telling him, "Yeah, you can say he's, you can compare him to Xavi. You know, that's what you guys need." Because Barca's saying he's somebody we need. He plays like Xavi, and we think it could be a future for him in Barcelona. You know, because he's playing like him, and that's a playing style that we we love. So he's pretty much, I think, saying like some stuff like, you know, yeah, but you know, don't take too much into compar- comparison comparisons because he is young. You don't want to, to bring him in and then him disappoint you because, again, he's jumping from one league to another. It's going to be different. The pressure of him, because he's so young, maybe the pressure could get to him and he could end up flopping, kind of like um, the other two. So it's, t- it's it's really, he's pretty much just saying that like, don't be comparing, comparing him too much like Xavi at this point of his career, you know. But, uh, I mean, from what, the way he's playing Ajax, in, in Ajax, um, it's uh, it's pretty good, man. He's, he's it, it does really look like he's got a future. So I mean, if he, if they if they if he makes the move, I think he could benefit Barcelona more as a future star. So we're gonna give him a five out of ten. Next is Harry Winks from Spurs, Tottenham. Another young player, another young bug. He isn't pretty much a starter there. I believe he's not. I think he just played a couple of games there, here and there. But, uh, I mean, he plays the same way he does, as Chavi did. Mostly uh, short passing, a lot of passing, keeping the ball, not letting it go. Um, loves to play the midfield. Doesn't get too many goals. Chavi wasn't known for his goals. He was known for his passing, his assists, his playmaking style. And that's what Harry Winks is looking like as of right now. So he has, one, from what I know, he has scored two times in maybe... 90 some appearances I'm not sure I don't know the numbers really well but I mean Harry Wings looks like he has a future he's doing great in the with Tottenham well not anymore because he got eliminated but you know he's doing great in the t- on the on the Premier League and they got eliminated from two cups I don't know if you noticed but <laughs> in one week uh, or in two weeks I don't know something like that short amount of time but uh, Harry Wings he looks promising so He's still young. That's the thing. He's still young. So, you know, give him some time. We'll see how it goes. But as of right now, 
We're going to have to give him the 5 out of 10 as well. Time with Frankie Dijon. Okay, wow, look at that water room. I can hear it. Next is a Barcelona player who was actually recognized by Leo Messi himself, who com actually compared him to Xavi. You know, he praised him because, uh, well, he wants, they interviewed him and they told him, what do you think, what do you think of new, the new recruits, the new people who are coming in, the new transfers? And he's like, you know what, I'm surprised that this guy, I'm, uh, he quickly knows, knows how to be in the Barcelona team. He knows how to train with them. He knows how to play the Barcelona style. He pretty much has the Barca DNA in him. And that himself is, you should know, as Arthur Mello. So like I said, he was praised by Messi. He loves to, he was saying how he, he plays. So he says he likes to have the ball. He loves to play short. He doesn't like to lose it. Who does that remind you of? The legend himself, Xavi, right? So, I mean, Barcelona fans uh, finally saw that. I believe in the Champions League game, I want to say. They finally saw like how good Arthur Melo is. You know, how valuable he can be to Barca. And pretty much agreed with what Messi was saying. If they heard of the interview, you know, you never know. <laughs> but we're going to give uh, Arthur Melo a 6 out of 10 rating to Xavi. Xavi rating, is what we call it. Uh, next one. Marco Verratti. I am flying to this because, yeah, we got we, we to gotta keep him. We got to keep him doing it. We got to do what I do, right? I got a lot of things going on today. Marco Verratti. PS plays for PSG. So in the past he's won five league titles. Uh I wanna say he's got the Xavi influence. Like Xavi had the influence on Barca, they trusted him. He was pretty much a captain when he wasn't a captain, but he was a captain. I think he was a captain. But uh when he didn't play as a captain, he pretty much played like a captain. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But uh so he has that Xavi influence, you know, like people trusted Xavi. You know, because of his influence. I don't know why, but even I would trust Xavi. I would trust him. So, pretty much the PSG players have that trust in Marco Verratti. Because he has that Xavi influence. He's got the Verratti influence. You know. So, he's won wait, five league titles with PSG. He's taken them to five league titles. I mean, it's an over oversight team. You can say that. But still, he is part of the team. He has... He hasn't won the World Cup. I was about to say he has won the World Cup, but he hasn't. That's a different player. He hasn't won the World Cup. It's not his fault, though. This is a World Cup is a team effort. It's not one player. It's not just Mbappe winning the World Cup, guys. It's France winning the World Cup. So, he hasn't won the World Cup, but it's not his fault. It's because, I mean, Italy is struggling. They need to bring up a couple more of their Italian players. You know, it's, it's their fault, though. I want to believe them because... You don't see a lot of Italians playing in the Italian league. Like, they got this whole, you know, bringing the international players in. You know, buy international players. And it should be like something where they, they should have like teams of, like majority of Italians just to build this. You know, they got to build that Italian team for that uh, national squad. I don't know why they don't think about that. They just think about winning the, the titles, you know. I mean, that's important too, but... You gotta build your players, your national team players as well. You gotta have room for that. I'm talking to the city now. But uh yeah, that's you know he has time though. He has time. Chavi didn't win like, like I said, Chavi didn't win the World Cup until he was thirty. Marco Arata, you still have time, brother. You still have time, man. But yeah, he has uh pretty much has that Chavi playing style in midfield for uh going on in PSG, so we'll see what happens with him. We'll see how he does. I mean, he is in PSG, but we're going to rate him a 7 out of 10. David Silva, the next one. This is his own fellow Spaniard. I believe he's played 125 games with Spain. That was like, I think, 3 or 5 games short from uh, Xavi. So there is, that thing, there is that comparison right there. They've been important players in the Spanish team. They won the World Cup together. Pepe Guardiola said something about David Silva. And you know, David Silva, I've always had my eye on this guy. Because he was always... Like, I always saw him as a good midfielder. Um, he loves to play in the more of a... I want to say like a left wing. You know, more of a winger. 
uh, than a center midfielder like Xavi did. But um, that, but he has that. Um, Pepe Guardiola said that he has that uh, mix between. He's pretty much like a mix between Xavi and Iniesta. And when you talk about Spanish midfielders, you more you initially think about Xavi and Iniesta. You know. I mean, at least I do. <laughs> Those were like two huge impactful midfielders for Spain. And you know, I like to add David Silva there to a third mix right there, but you know. Being a mix between of those two isn't so bad because he can play wingers, he can play center mid, um, he can score goals. He, he I, I see him as more like he likes to play up front more, like higher up into like a forward position where he can score goals, or make some beastly crosses, you know, some badass plays. And where else? What else? What else? What else? What about what else? About I got some notes up there, but uh, I'm trying to think of like what I was going with. Ah, I got nothing. All right, so the next thing I had up there was like uh, he likes to share Xavi's composure and control of the ball. If you know like what I mean by that, but uh, but yeah, David Silva. Um. Probably the closest man from like a Spanish nationality to being compared to Xavi. I mean, even Iniesta, man. Iniesta is also a a pretty big player for for a Spanish player. Well, Spanish midfielders. And did I say it's seven out of ten? Rating a seven out of ten. So last one, number eight, number ocho, Tony Cruz. He plays for Real Madrid. Now here's the thing about Tony Cruz. He's a great. He plays. He plays his position as well. So he plays like center mid. And he plays just like him. He plays just like Chapman. Likes to make plays. You know, he's a playmaker. He can uh, pass the ball. Likes to play short. He likes to keep the ball a lot. Um, keep it close. Um, he's pretty much comparable to. You can you can compare him to Luka Modric as well. And Luka Modric is known as a playmaker as well. He can also score. You know, if he goes up to center attack. Um, the thing about him is, not only is a World Cup winner just like Xavi is, but uh, Xavi himself recognized Tony Cruz and said, you know, he could pretty much, he pretty much is like me. He pretty much plays like me. So, um, for a Barcelona legend to recognize a Real Madrid player is is pretty big. So just just with that, I mean Tony Cruz is he's a pretty amazing player as well. But just just with that, we give him that eight out of ten, and that's the highest man. That's the highest compared to everybody else. So uh, Tony Cruz, if you're if you're listening to this podcast or watching it. I mean, congratulations, man. Congratulations, man. You're, you're up there. But then again, I don't like really comparing a lot of players to legends, you know. It's my final words here. Here on Cyber Talk, but pretty much I don't like comparing a lot of legends, you know, to these younger athletes or to other athletes in general because you know what I like to say I like to say just just make a name for yourself you be that person that people can compare you to but again I don't know like like that whole comparison thing so like all these players all these eight these eight players I hope they make a name for themselves you know I really do um, so that way they can be, you can be like, well, don't compare him to Xavi. They're his own, you know, compare Xavi to Tony Cruz. <laughs> no, no, don't compare anybody, you know. Just be like, well, Tony Cruz, he's Tony Cruz. He's not Xavi. He's not the next Xavi. He's just the next Tony Cruz. You know, David Silva isn't, you know, anybody like Tony Cruz. Isn't anybody like, isn't like Xavi. He's just David Silva. Yeah, they, may, they may play almost similar but there's always that some there's always that little extra flair that adds something else to that player, you know? That makes that player special, you know. 
And it doesn't matter whether they go from one league to another and then flop on that other bigger league. They were good in the other one. I mean, it's different. Leagues are different. You you know, the playing style is different. But these guys had a certain playing style. And when they changed to a different pitch, to a different weather conditions, to different, you know, um, levels, it's just like, that messes with your head, man. That makes you go wonkers. They, maybe they got pressure or something. But it doesn't mean they're bad players. I mean, I'm not out there. They're better than me. So let's not. So let's just say that this was all a waste of time. And let's just put these guys in their own categories. Yeah. Forget the ratings. Forget everything. Delete. 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 All right, we're going to move on to the big... The great big story. <laughs> what am I doing? All right, this is part two for the audio version of the Submian podcast. If you want to watch it on YouTube, well, it's just going to be one whole part. But, you know, I got to gotta mention this stuff, you know. So we'll be down with regular stories now. Well, everyday things, you know, what we find in the real world. Um, honestly, it's more like instead of just talking... Bad news, because you know, normally you only listen to bad news or watch bad news when they're watching on TV, looking stuff up online. It's always negative stuff. You know, I barely see positive stuff. So here at Unburst, all I really want to do is focus on at least one story where it is positive, where it's all positive, you know, and... So the big story here is, and if you want to look at more news, I do have, I get these from an app called The Great Big Story. They always have these, it's just awesome reads, you know, where it's all positive and stuff, good vibes. And I just normally just look up, I'm I'm just reading some stuff and I'm like, oh, that's that's a cool story. I I want to talk about that. So if you want to check out that app, if you want to listen to more stories, um, I choose one out of the week, I think. Pretty sure it's one out of the week. And one out of the day or something. Yeah, one out of the week. So, uh, yeah. Just yesterday I was reading about something in Mexico City. About turning old gas cars into electric cars. Now, these guys, they are... So, well, let's just read it. So, in Mexico City, more than 3.5 million cars navigate the streets, plaza, and avenues in North America's most populous urban area. Now, I went to the Mexico City... Now, there's a bunch of cars. It seems like yeah, there is a bunch of cars pretty much around here, like the, like around here in the States, though. You know, mostly because here we have the expressways. They don't really much have, they pretty much don't have expressways. And you see the bunch of cars just like on regular streets, you know. So, but it is a lot of cars. Don't get me wrong. It's a, a lot of cars. And you're thinking like, man, that's, this is really bad for the environment, you know. But pollution, you know, pollution. But uh, if there's a couple of guys over there, two guys who are turning old gas cars, kind of like buggies, I want to say, but they turn the old gas cars into electric cars to help the environment, you know. Now, here's, here's the thing. So that makes for a ton of exhaust. But luckily, there's a solution to this environmental problem. Enter, enter, <laughs> engineer slash auto mechanic Alvaro de la Paz and computer scientist Hector Ruiz. Together, they're transforming, they're transforming old gasoline-fueled automobiles into electric cars. Over the past decade, the pair has converted more than two dozen vehicles into zero-emissions automobiles. While that may seem like a small dent in an enormous cloud of exhaust, which is true, it's only like twelve, like twelve dozen. That they have, like they haven't done like so like a lot of cars. But here's the thing: their main focus is. For hopefully, for the hu- the future, you know, because they have kids, the future of, of like young people, to learn from this experience, and start doing this, you know, turning into old gas cars that pretty much used to run on more gas or cost cost more pollution because of old you know old models and stuff. They just, back then it was limited, you know, so turn cars like that into future electric running cars, you know, convert them pretty much, which is pretty smart, you know, instead of like, 
even like yeah we got electric cars nowadays and you can buy brand new ones but i mean what do you do with these those old cars yeah you just throw them to the junkyard or something right they're not they're just sitting there or something they don't work but these guys can convert that old car into brand new electric running cars that's pretty smart that's pretty it saved it saves from building a brand new car and it's taking old gas cars and converting them to electric cars you know what i'm saying i don't know if anybody's processing this stuff but this is mind-blowing to me <laughs> um but yeah their main focus is to like you know i think it says it around here the, the pair hopes that their project will inspire younger generations to work for a brighter cleaner future i mean that's that's the main point of it it's not very much into it it's just you know a little something, something small, you know, that hopefully one day in the future can turn something into, that can turn into something big. Wow. Did you hear that? <laughs> so, yeah. That's that. I mean, that's cool, you know. I, I think that's uh, pretty smart. I mean, you're not only trying to help the planet uh, from, you know, small, really tiny, you know, you're not doing major stuff but you know something small can always spark something big that's pretty much what i'm trying to say so they're doing this hopefully they can you know inspire like they said younger generations to think of a cleaner brighter future it might be a little too late but well it's never too late you never say it's too late it's never too late um there's always a way to make everything better in the future so you know We'll see what happens with uh, the future of our planet. Um, moving on to something, <laughs> because I didn't want to talk about nothing native, but uh, Rude United Airlines passenger. She uh, just recently, I think it was yesterday, a video leaked about some woman who was, I want to say in the middle row, middle of the plane, and she got in between in the middle. You know how there's three seats, and she got in the middle seat, and Right on her right and right on her left side, there was two big people who pretty much was invading her bubble. So she was like this, I'm guessing. I didn't see the video. I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I probably couldn't YouTube it, but I was like, you know what? I ain't trying to watch this woman complain. Now, there's nothing about, com there's something about complaining, man. Now, I'm always that person to say, who follows the whole, I don't know who said it, but if you got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. But, I um, mean, if you're going to complain, I hate complainers. I hate people who complain, man. That's, like, my pet peeve, you know. Like, seriously, if you complain about food, like, don't be rude. One time I got, here's a quick story. One time I went to a Denny's. I ordered a steak with some whole grain rice and some, um, I don't know, probably like red skin potatoes or something. Uh, well, I, t I told my whole order. <laughs> But anyways, that's what I ordered. And what do I get? I get a chicken plate. Like, that's not even the right protein. That's not even the right place. Not even the right protein. It had nothing that I wanted. Well, actually, it didn't have rice on it, but uh, the wrong kind of rice. But, um, but yeah, that's what I got. Chicken instead of steak. A chicken dinner instead of a steak dinner. And, you know, I didn't complain at all. I didn't go. I didn't go and start yelling at the the wait, waitress or the cooks or anything. You know, like I didn't get my my steak. I want my steak. I want my. Uh, I don't want this chicken. I I came here for a steak. I want a steak. No way, man. I still ate that chicken. I ate that whole plate clean. I ate that plate clean because I know that because I I I know that they're just gonna take that plate and they're gonna throw it away. That's a waste of food. That's food waste. Food. That's I ain't doing that. I ain't part of that. And you know, I still I still tipped. I still paid for my food as long as I checked my check and as, as long as they charged me for my the diet that same chicken dinner plate I was good it was like a chicken vegetarian stuff it was still good it was delicious man you know but yeah that's the point I didn't complain uh, I've went I've had terrible service before um, where I order appetizer and then I ordered a, a burger probably I don't remember but uh, it was like some wings for an appetizer and burger probably but you know uh, it was taking too long it was like, and I was like, well, what's going on here? But, you know, like, well, I mean, I'm still waiting. I'm going to wait patiently. I waited patiently. And my server actually comes back and she tells me, or she tells us, who, who I went with, she tells us, 
you know, hey guys, listen, I uh, it's kind of embarrassing, but I totally forgot what you guys ordered. Now in my head, I'm like, what? You forgot what we ordered? It's been like an hour. <laughs> But uh, I mean, that was in my head. I didn't really say anything like that, you know. That was in my head. Um, but, you know, we just responded normal, calm. We just told them, oh, we got some wings. We, we told them our order again. We got some wings and a burger and so-and-so and stuff. Um, she goes back. She's like, all right. 30 minutes later, our food comes all together. You know, pretty much got my appetizer with my entree. But um, I didn't complain. You know, that whole time I didn't complain. I never complained whether... I'm riding a plane, I'm on a plane, and I don't like my seat or something, or my food doesn't get here, or I get the wrong food, or whatever it is, I don't complain. You know, people have, you don't know, you never know what, what, what people are going on through their lives. They might be having a bad day. Just, just, you, you might have had a bad day, they might have be having a bad day. You never know. Something shitty might have happened to them. You know, somebody's driving slow in front of me, I'm not going to be like beeping at them or swerving or you know, changing lanes or going across them, you know, just to, just to get in front of them, you know, I, I just drive patiently, you know, um, but people who, who complain, that's like a pet peeve for me, man, that's like, there's no reason for you to complain, man, you're not missing, you know, you have your both feet, you have your both legs, you're, you're gonna get your food, you're gonna, you're riding a plane, you're riding on a plane, you know, you, you, you get all these, these things, you you you're able to ride a plane. You're able to you know be able to walk. You're able to have both your thumbs. <laughs> these these thumbs, man. You know some people are don't even have thumbs. You know some people are unlucky to have like not have the things you have. So there's no reason for you to complain. In fact, I've seen people who who like who are handicapped and and don't com don't don't complain. They're still living life like you know if they were living like like anybody else. They're still happy. And, I mean, that's just, there's no excuse for complaining at all. There's no excuse at all. So this person who's writing this play, I don't even know. The whole story is pretty much she complained that she didn't have enough room or not. But, I mean, I get it. If you're uncomfortable, it can be uncomfortable sometimes when you're, like, squished together. And if you're uncomfortable, just try to go talk privately to, you know, an airline attendant or something. Don't make a big scene and start, like, Yelling like uh, on your phone or something, or yelling to people, I can't breathe. You know, I can't breathe. Help! 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 I can't. I don't need it. I don't need it. You know, like, like I don't get it, man. There was no need for that. There was no need for um, her shouting. You know, angrily, like these people are too big. Uh, they're squishing me. I can't breathe or something. You know, there was no need for that. There was no need for being disrespectful. There was no need for. You know, being rude whatsoever. Um, eventually, uh, I think they got her a new seat in the back or something. And pe I mean, she got slandered. She got, she got, she got slandered. Some people were actually, I think, um, but on the media, but on on the plane, she got slandered. Like you're disgusting. You're so rude. Um, you should be ashamed. Stuff like that. But I, I think on social media, some people agreed with her. Other people didn't agree with her. You know, it was kind of like a maybe. 60 40 type of thing you know 60 on her side uh, against her 40 on, on her side you know but the thing is if you wanted to move there was no need to be rude about it all you had to do was get up go to the flight attendant or something or talk to some talk to the flight attendant privately and tell them calmly can i get another seat you know there was no need for the whole shouting at all you know, being rude out loud. There was no need for that. No need at all. Pet peeve of mine. Complainers, man. I hate that. I hate that. If I see them in public, man, I'll call them out. You know, I call them out. I tell them, like, yo, like, chill, man. Like, like you got to relax. You know? Jesus. Like, oh, man. There's another, there's another thing I want I wanted to talk about that I saw in, like, in a video. With, like, some people trashing some shoe plays because they were asked... To turn off the music, you know, because they had curse words, and they got offended or something, <laughs> started like trashing the whole sh like I think it was a journeys or something, but like, damn, I would have stepped in and like done something to like like you know like tell them off like yo you, you guys gotta chill like it's just like relax you know like chill. All right, I think we'll go real quick on the difference between 
horror movies and horror games, but just in case, I like the, the uh, like everything shuts off, <laughs> it stops recording or something. Um, here's the question of the week: If you could have, if you're listening to this on audio, and the audio version on iTunes, I mean, you can always like, I don't know, tweet at me or something your answers, or go to the, go to the uh, YouTube version and comment your answers or something. I mean, if there's an answer I really like, I really, really, really like, I'll definitely for sure pin that out there, you know. <laughs> Why not, you know, put, put it on top so everybody can see. If I liked it, I'm pretty sure everybody would like it, you know. So if you could have the job from when you were five, five years old, what would you be doing right now? So, for example, me, let's, let's say me, if I was five years old back in the day, I mean, I'd be Goku right now. <laughs> I'd be Goku saving the universe. You know, that'd be me. But... Something more realistic, let's go, uh, I'd probably be a WWE superstar. <laughs> I'd be a wrestler of some sort, you know. That's what I would be. But uh, yeah, unrealistically, I'd be Goku saving the world. I'd be a super saiyan. I'd be a saiyan saving the world, the universe. But uh, realistically, I'd probably be a superhero still, you know, like Spider-Man or something. But, but uh, as my side job, so I'd be like a superhero um spider-man type of person you know superhero like that like a marvel superhero well let's just go with like a spider-man super i'd probably be like spider junior or something um with a side job of being a wrestler yeah <laughs> that's what i would be doing right now but uh yeah if comment your answers tweet your answers whatever um probably prefer comedy so i can put that in a, like pin it or something that's what i meant to do with the other ones but uh, I never got any answers, so. Oh well. Uh, let's talk about the difference between horror movies and horror games. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the, both of these. I just want to talk about this because it's coming Valentine. Well, February is coming, and February is known for either one love or two horror movies for some reason. I don't know why. Can somebody explain that to me? Like horror movies come out like other than October, they like to put out horror movies in February as well kind of weird I like that it's cool love or hate maybe it's the love or hate thing I don't know but uh I like horror movies well I kind of like them because they're like I don't know why it's just like the suspense of them but they're really really kind of terrible but the suspense of it really gets me I like I like one of the movies though with watching a horror movie because I like to see everybody else jump like I don't get scared but everybody else is it's hilarious when you see everybody else jump but uh, def- horror games, for sure, I'm a huge fan of horror games. You know, the Resident Evils, the Evil Within, the, uh, I used to love the Fears. I used to like the, uh, what else am I missing? Uh, there was uh, that, that really cool one that was supposed to be Silent Hill, but uh, PT or something that was like a little like a little demo or something, but that was cool. But yeah, horror games are dope, and uh, I like playing them a lot. Um, but let's compare the difference between them. So here's the thing. Why I prefer horror games over horror movies because I have control. I can have the decisions. You know, in horror movies, you're always like, don't go in there, don't go in there. That's what the bad, the killer is. Um, you're, you stupid idiot. <laughs> you know, you, you watch these people make stupid decisions, right? So it's kind of like, you always wonder, like I always told myself like, damn, if I was in a horror movie, that'd be cool. I'd be like, I'd probably be the last one to survive or something. Um, whether, whether I'd probably be the last survivor and I don't survive or, you know, I do survive. Um, or how I would like to deal with, like, Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers or, you know, like, like Leatherface, you know, it'd be crazy as fuck, well. you know, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's all just, uh, you know, you have no control there. It's just whatever happens in the movies, it happens. You know, you gotta deal with it. I gotta sit back and deal with it. But in horror games, it's, it's almost like I am there. It's like I'm there and I'm actually trying to survive. So I actually have control and that's what I like. So, you know, the whole thing with the whole, uh... You know, when the people are going, like, they know there's something bad about inside there and, and the other side of the door, and they're still creeping over there. Like, you have no control. You're just telling them, like, stop, stop. Don't go in there. Don't go in there, you know? But with horror games, you have the control. You have the control to uh, actually sometimes pick up the weapons and actually do something about it. You know, like, you're always telling yourself in the movies, like, man, I would do this and fight them back. You know? And in the games, it gives you that possibility. That's what I like. You know, it's just that huge. I think there's a couple more things that I can go in depth. You know, I can actually talk about more about this. I can probably maybe like a 30 minute video. You know, if I were to 
you know, jot some points. Maybe we would do that. We we probably would do that. That'd be dope, you know. Maybe that could be an idea. But uh, but the main point of it is, you know, that you know, in horror movies, you really don't have that much control in it. You know, you can't really tell the person what to do or what not to do. Whereas, you know, you want to do things, but you can't. You know, you, you always, you're always asking yourself, like, man, I would do that instead of this. You know, how would I really do, how, I would deal with him like this in this way. But you can't really do that because in, it's just the actors who are by themselves. You know, they're, they're in that movie and they're, they're, they're told to play that role. So it's like, pretty much you have no control. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Come on, not about control. But in games, you know, I can decide what weapons to pick up. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, they allow it to. Um, I get to decide where to explore. I get to decide where to go. Again, sometimes, but still. But, uh, yeah, whether I live or die in the game is actually my choice. And, you know, I've died sometimes. And I'd be like, dang, I made the wrong decision. And sometimes, I mean, you can see that with Until Dawn. But, uh, on my live streams. But... But yeah, when I successfully do something in one one go, that's like, oh man, that was dope. I actually did something that I can think I can actually, you know, like I would do probably in real life if I was in this situation. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. I like, but I mean, again, I like them both. I like to watch more movies. I like to watch more games. I mean, I like to play horror games. But uh, yeah, I prefer for sure horror games over horror movies any day, any day. I think I feel like they're more, they get me more, you know, more into it, more closer, and then I actually do have a jump scare on some games. I remember Fear got me, like the first Fear, got me a few times, even within as well, you know, because I'd be like, well, I can't really see what's what's that, you know, to get closer, because they make it dark, and I try to get in there, like, closer, just to pay, t t just to see what's the little small details, and then boom, something pops out, and I get scared. And I used to play, like, in the, Horror games at night. I mean, at night, lights off, and it was pretty fun. But I mean, horror movies, yeah, they're dark, but they still have to have light in it so that you can see what's going on. <laughs> but uh, for sure, for sure. And I think horror games have a little bit more, more badass, like, villains. Like the box head from the, I'm pretty sure the, bo the, the what's his name, box head? from Evil Within was a lot cooler than Leatherface. You know, like the dude has a box for the head. Well, he's got his head in the box. He's got that chainsaw. And it's even scarier when that is chasing you than Leatherface, because you're like, well, where is this guy swinging? Because I can't, he can't really see where is he swinging. <laughs> but Leatherface can pretty much see you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so answer the question of the week, and I mean that's it. This is something in thirty for sure. And we we think that's it. We gotta we gotta wrap it up. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hope you lasted through the whole video. And we got more stuff next week. Remember, some ends are actually weekly every Tuesday. The iTunes version comes out on the day, so on Tuesdays, and then the YouTube version comes out on the next day, Wednesdays. So. Stay tuned with that and uh, keep up with the live streams. Um, for now, we're finished up Spider-Man. I don't know if we're going to continue. We're going to move on to Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. It just came out and looked so dope. But uh, pretty sure I'll... I don't know if I'm going to be turning this into like a Nintendo kind of thing where we're just playing Nintendo games. Pretty much like Nintendo games more. I think that would get, I don't know, more entertaining than uh, playing these solo games from the playstation i don't know i don't know, I don't know yet we still haven't decided on yet, decided on yet but uh, we'll see what happens and uh more content coming out so just stay tuned for that stuff follow the social media twitter at orion 312 or same one around 312 at, on instagram so yeah that's what we got today just share the video comment like um, just going. I'm, I'm usually just going for five likes each video, so yeah, no more than that, no less than that. So yeah, uh, cool. Peace out.